I am Dr. Nizar Bayliss from the University of Calgary. I'm presenting on behalf of my co-investigators the results on the efficacy and safety of eldranatumab in patients with relapsed refractory multiple myeloma who are naive to B-cell maturation antigen directed therapies, result from cohort A of the mechanism three studies. Eldranatumab is a humanized bispecific antibody that targets BCMA expressing multiple myeloma cells and CD3 expressing T cells. Data from the ongoing phase one study, Magnesium MM1 study, demonstrated the safety and efficacy of eldranatumab in relapsed refractory multiple myeloma. Here, I'll be presenting the result of the phase two, Magnesium M3 trial in patients with relapsed refractory multiple myeloma and no prior BCMA targeted therapy. Magnesium 3 is an open label, multi center, non randomized phase two study that enrolled patients with relapsed refractory multiple myeloma who are refractory to at least one, prior, one of the following proteasome inhibitors, immunomodulatory drugs, and anti-CD38 antibody, ECOG performance status of two or better, creatinine clearance of 30 mL per minute or better, and a platelet count of 25 times 10 to the 9 or better. The study included two cohort, cohort A in patients with no prior BCMA-directed treatment, and cohort B in patients with prior BCMA-directed ADC or CAR T-cell therapy. The study primary endpoint were overall response rate by Bicker, Secondary endpoint include, among others, duration of response, overall response rate, complete remission rate, MRD negativity rate, progression-free survival, overall survival. I'll be presenting here the result of cohort A that enrolled 123 patients. Elranata was given with two-step up dosing on week one, day one, at fixed dose of 12, milli 12 milligram, and on, day, on week one, day four, at fixed dose of 32 milligram subcutaneously, followed by weekly dosing of 76 milligrams subcutaneously for six cycles. After six cycles, patients achieved a partial remission or better and persistent response for two months or better, the dosing was allowed to be changed to every two weeks. Pre-medication for adratamab included acetaminophen 650 milligram, diphenhydramine 25 milligram, and dexamethasone 20 milligram, given 30 minutes prior to first three doses of adratamab. Shown in here are the patient characteristics. The median age was 68, ranging from 36 to 89. The study enrolled 7.3% uh, of the patients were African-American or Black, and in particular in the American cohort, 17 of the patients were African-American. ECOP performance status of one or higher was 57.7%, revised ISS stage 1, 22%, to uh, 55.3%. 67.5% of the patient had good risk myeloma by cytogenetics, and 25.2% were high risk. Importantly, 39% of the patients had extra mobility disease by Bicker, 21.1% had 50% or more bone marrow involvement by plasma cells. Prior line of therapy was five, ranging from two to 22, and overall 96.7% of the patients were triple class refractory and 42% were penta drug refractory. At data cutoff of, of October 14, 2022, the median duration of follow-up was 10.4 months, the median duration of treatment was 5.6 months, and 48% of the patients received more than six months of therapy. 42.3% of the patients had ongoing treatment. The patient discontinued treatment were 57.7%, including 35% for progressive disease, 10.6% for adverse event, and 6.5% due to death. The overall response rate per bicker was 61%. Importantly, 55.3% were very good partial or better, and 27.6% were complete remission or better. Among the patients who achieved an objective response, the medium time to response was 1.2 months. MRD negativity rate at 10 minutes to 5 was achieved in 90.9% .9 of available patients. These objective response were seen across patient cohort, as you see in this forest plot. Patient with high risk and the risk equally respond to therapy. Patient who have more or less than 50% bone marrow involvement also responded as well as patients who had uh, more than five line of therapy and irrespective of age. A trend toward low response was seen in patients with extra mobility disease and patients with ISS stage three. Importantly, these responses were durable, as you see in this uh, waterfall plot. Uh, the response occurred by color from stable disease to complete response from pink to blue to deep green. And you can see that responses deepened with time. And again, these responses were durable with the uh, ongoing response in 77.3% at the time of this analysis. Duration of response has been, median, median duration of response has not been reached with nine month duration of response of 84.4%, 12 
progression-free survival also has not been reached with a nine-month median progression-free survival of 63%, and overall su survival has not been reached with a nine-month overall survival of 70.3%. With regard to safety, the most common grade three, four TAEs were hematological event, as you can see in the table on the left, including anemia, neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, and on-target lymphopenia. With regard to non-hematological events, all CRS and ICANs were grade one or two, no fatal neurotoxicity were observed, and the TAE led to permanent discontinuation of treatment in 15.4% of the patients. Also, TAEs led to death in 21 patients, 11 due to progressive disease, and two discontinued treatment, uh, or in two considered treatment rated, rated by the investigator, including one grade five pseudomonal pneumonia and one grade five failure to thrive. With regard to CRS and ICANs, the step up dosing priming regimen successfully mitigated the rate and severity of CRS, and importantly, CRS was very predictable. As you can see on the table on the left, the overall CRS rate was 56.3%, with no grade 3 CRS, and grade 1 in 42%, and grade 2 in 14.3%. And similarly, in ICANs, no grade 3 ICANs, overall rate of 3.4%, including 0.8% grade 1 and 2.5% grade 2. The median time to uh, the CRS or ICANs uh, was two days, ranging from one to nine days for both CRS and ICANs. The median time to resolution of CRS and ICANs was also two days, ranging from one to 19 days for CRS and one to six days for ICANs. 22.7% of the patient received tocilizumab for CRS and 8.4% received steroid. As you can see in the river plot on the right side of the screen, the uh, uh, CRS occurred predominantly with the first two step up dosing and with dose three, occurring in 44.5% step up dose one, 20.2% step up dose two, and 5.9% in step up dose three, uh, or the full dose three. And only one patient experienced CRS beyond the dose three. With regard to infection, overall infection were seen in 66.7% of the patient, grade three, four, and 35%. The median time to onset of infection was 47.5 days, ranging from 1 to 295 days. COVID-19, uh, as we expect in this era, was seen in 25.2% of the patient. 1.6% of the patient died due to COVID-19 pneumonia. 6.5% of the patient infection that led to permanent discontinuation of elanatumab. Among patients with quantitative IgG data, 75.2% had IgG level less than 400 mg per deciliter and 40.7% of the patients received IVIG during the study. In conclusion, elrantamab is efficacious and well-tolerated in patients with abstractive multiple myeloma. A high response rate of above 61% is occurring early, deep, and durable uh, with a nine-month duration of response of 84.4%. With the median follow-up of 10.4 months, the median PFS and OS have not been reached and a nine-month PFS rate of 63%. Elrenate map toxicity were very manageable. The step up priming regimen with pre medication successfully mitigated the rate and severity of CRS and ICANS. CRS and ICANS were limited to grade one and two with no grade three or higher events. And CRS events occurred early with the majority of the event limited to the first two step up dosing. The most common grade three, four TAEs were hematological. These results clearly support the expansion of the mechanism program to evaluate elranetumab alone in combination with other antimyeloma therapy. And then going phase three, mechanism five trial exploring uh, elranetumab in abstracting multiple myeloma. And a phase three, mechanism seven trial is exploring elranetumab as a maintenance therapy post-transplant in newly diagnosed multiple myeloma. I would like to thank my, uh, our patients and their family, as well as study investigators, nurses, and study staff. Uh, thank you for your attention.